So let us enjoy uh, breathing in and breathing out with the bell for one minute. Breathing in, I know I am alive. Breathing out, I smile to life in me and around me. Alive, smiling to life. Enjoy your practice. I feel breathing is more pleasant than speaking. In our place in uh, France, we uh, open the door for many people in Europe to come and practice with us. One day, uh, there is a French uh, journalist from uh, a French uh, television channel came to do a report on the, the life and the practice in Plum Village. And before we, uh, we allow him to, uh, to interview us, we invited him to join our uh, practice of mindful walking. There were many hundreds of people that morning to enjoy walking with us. Most of us were used to the practice and was able to enjoy every step we make. It's very lovely, very enjoyable walk. It lasted about 45 minutes. And there were many children. I was holding the hand of two children uh, and walked with them. And they uh, gave me a lot of freshness. And I channeled to them uh, my solidity, my peace. We enjoy walking a lot. But the journalist from the television he did not enjoy it at all. <laughs> he described it, uh, uh, the work later on as exhausting. <laughs> In fact, we did not make any effort. We just enjoy every step we make. We did not have anything to do. We just enjoy making steps and touch the earth and touch the wonders of life that, that were present uh, in the here and the now. But that journalist, it seemed that he was used to run. He was not able to stop and to be in the here and the now. There is in him a very strong energy pushing him always ahead. He was always thinking of this and that. He was not able to be there fully to enjoy what is going on. What was going on is uh, the morning was uh, beautiful, birds were singing, and the many children and adults uh, smiling and enjoy walking. It's a beautiful uh, uh, thing that you might, you might participate in, but he was not able to, to be in that moment. He was thinking, I think, about writing and uh, making a report for his television network. He was not free. The basic condition of happiness is to be free. If you, are, you have in mind something that you keep thinking about, well, you are caught and you have no freedom. If you think about the past, if you are caught about the sorrow, the regret about the past, if you keep thinking about the future, if you are anxious about what will happen to you in the future, and then you are caught by the future, you are not really free. In order to be there, to enjoy what is going on, 
because there are many wonders of life that are available in here, in the here and the now, like uh, the blue sky, the beautiful trees, the lovely faces of uh, children, the flowers, the birds, a lot of things, many wonders of life that are nourishing, refreshing, and healing. And he was not able to get in touch with all that because he was only thinking of doing his report. And there was a kind of energy in him pushing him ahead to think, trying to do what he wanted to do, and he wasn't able to, to be happy. And many people living in our society are like that. They do not have the capacity of being happy, even if the conditions for their happiness are already there. Plenty of them. Many of us believe that uh, it's impossible to be happy in the here and the now. Happiness may be possible in the future, but not now. And they need a few more conditions to be happy. Uh, most of people believe like that. It's a big pity. Because that kind of thinking prevents you to be happy right here and right now. You know that the French has a lovely song with the title, Qu'est-ce qu'on attend pour être heureux? What do we have to wait in order to be happy? It means that you have already many conditions to be happy. Just be happy. But I'm not sure that those who sing that song can be happy even if intellectually they know that there are conditions of happiness that are available to them. They need a little bit of training. The journalist, after 45 minutes of uh, walking, described it to me that the walk was exhausting. But for, for all of us, the walk was very refreshing, healing, and nourishing. The difference between, uh, is that he was not uh, capable to be in the here and the now and to touch the earth with his feet and to get in touch with the wonders of life that are available within him and around him. When you want to write an article or to make a report on a practice, you cannot just uh, go there and have a look and ask a few questions. Because in that way, you don't know really what is going on. You have to participate in the practice in order to really taste what is there. And that is why we have invited him to, to participate in, in the work and in other activities of uh, the community. It is true that in every one of us, there is a, a kind of an energy we call a habit energy, always pushing us ahead, doesn't allow us to be in the here and the now. It prevents us to be happy in the here and the now. And you have to recognize that energy every time it uh, comes up. About 15 years ago, a young American came to Plum Village in France and practiced. He stayed in the upper hamlet with the monks and the lay, uh, laymen. And he was very happy practicing because the energy of the community was quite strong. He was able to be in the here and the now, uh, generating the energy of mindfulness in order to, uh, to touch the wonders of life. He was supported by the presence of other practitioners. One day he was asked to go to the market to do some shopping. We organized uh, a day of Thanksgiving, and uh, every group that belonged to uh, one nation would like to offer one uh, national dish. So the African group, I wanted him to go with another person to do some shopping. And when he was in the marketplace, not supported by the Sangha, the happy energy came up again, and he, he was rushing. He was trying to do everything quickly in order to finish. And before that, during three weeks in a row, he did not see that uh, habit energy coming up. 
That is because of the fact that the collective energy of mindfulness in the community was strong enough to keep him in the here and the now. But now he was alone in the place. And suddenly he noticed that the energy of rushing, of one wanting to do everything quickly in order to, to go home, was coming up. And because he had been able to practice during three weeks, he was able to recognize that, that he was, uh, that the energy of rushing was in him. And he had an insight. That energy had been transmitted to him by his mother, because his mother was always like that, rushing, rushing all day, not being able to, to stop. So when he recognized that, when he got that kind of insight, he breathed in and out, and he said, Hello, Mommy, I know you are there. <laughs> and suddenly, the energy stopped. And he knew that uh, without the Sangha, without the community around, he had to be, to be on himself. That is why he did not quit one moment of mindful breathing. And he continued to practice mindful breathing during the whole time that is left for him to do the shopping. And that energy did not come back at all because he was protected by the energy uh, generated by the practice of mindful breathing. When you are on your own, you do not have the collective energy of your community. And you have to practice uh, in order to protect yourself. To protect yourself from the danger, from the accident that come from outside, but from the inside. In fact, most of the accidents came from the inside. If you are peaceful, if you are lucid, you do not draw accident to yourself. And that is why it's very important to practice uh, being peace, being lucid, in order to protect yourself from dangers and accidents that come at any time. So he went back to the upper hamlet safe because he was able to practice mindful breathing during the whole course of shopping. If our journalist had got some uh, instructions and training, he would have been able to enjoy the work with us. But because his mind was uh, fully occupied by the idea and the intention to finish the report in order to go home, that is why he was not able to enjoy. When you practice, uh, when, when you walk, it is possible for you to walk in such a way that every step becomes nourishing and healing. And this is not difficult. Whether you are a psychologist, whether you are a businessman, whether you are a congressman working on Capitol Hill, it's always possible to practice mindful walking and to enjoy every step you make everywhere, even on the street. If you know the art of mindful walking, then you'll be fully present in the here and the now. You make yourself available to life, and you make life available to you. Because mindfulness is the kind of energy that helps you to be fully present, fully alive in the here and the now. And every one of us can generate that energy of mindfulness in order to be, to be alive, to be fully present. When you breathe in, and if you bring your attention to your in-breath, your full attention to your in-breath, and you become your in-breath, because you are mindful of your in-breath, you are concentrated on your in-breath, that is why you and your in-breath become one. And don't think that it is something difficult, something um, tiring to do. Because breathing in may be very enjoyable. When you breathe in, you may realize the fact that you are still alive. Because a dead body that lies there, no matter what you want to, to help, that dead body can no longer breathe in and breathe out. 
to breathe in and to be aware that you are alive can bring joy. And if you are used to the practice, breathing in can bring you a lot of joy and harmony. You don't have to do anything. You allow yourself to breathe in naturally. Don't try to struggle with your in-breath. Just allow it to be the way it is, whether it is short or long or harmonious or not harmonious. You allow it to be the way. You just become aware of it. That is all. Like a flower, the sunshine just shines on the flower. It doesn't have to intervene. Breathing in, I'm aware of my in-breath. Breathing out, I'm aware of my out-breath. Don't interfere. Just become aware of it. And during the time you become aware of your in-breath and out-breath, you stop your thinking naturally. And stopping the thinking is a very, very helpful. If you are caught in your thinking all the time, you get tired. And you are not capable of, uh, of being there alive. Descartes said that, uh, I think therefore I am, but I don't think so. I think therefore I am not there. <laughs> I'm not really there to touch the wonders of life. So stopping the thinking is something that naturally happens if you focus fully your attention on your in-breath and your out-breath. And you know, after one minute of practice or two, the quality of your in-breath and out-breath will be improved. Your breath will become deeper, slower, more harmonious. There will be more peace, more harmony in your in-breath and out-breath. Whether you are lying down, or sitting, or walking, practicing mindful breathing, you bring the element of harmony, of peace, into yourself. And that element of uh, peace and uh, harmony will begin to penetrate into your body. Because in your body, there is a tension, there is a stress, there is war in your body. We have not taken good care of our body. We have worked too hard. We have brought into it many poisons, many toxins by the way we eat, by the way we drink, by the way we work, by the way we stay up late in the night. We have not been very kind to our body. We have caused a lot of stress, conflict, tension in our body. So when you practice mindful breathing, and bring the element of peace and harmony into your breath, it will begin to penetrate into your body. And your body begins to, to profit from the peace of your breathing and the harmony of your breathing. Whether you are lying down or sitting or standing, well, the element of stress, of conflict, of tension will be released slowly with the practice of mindful breathing. In a text called uh, uh, The Scripture on the Practice of Mindful Breathing, the Buddha said, Breathing in, I'm aware of my in-breath. Breathing out, I'm aware of my out-breath. That is the first exercise. The third exercise is, Breathing in, I'm aware of my body. Breathing out, I release tension in my body. Whether you are sitting or lying down on the grass, it's always possible for you to enjoy your breathing in and breathing out in order to release the tension in your body. And then later on, you can use the energy of mindfulness to embrace your feelings, your emotions that are full of uh, tension, full of pain also. But you have to succeed in embracing your body first and release the tension the stress, the conflict in your body before you know how to handle your painful feelings and emotions. And during the time we spend together here, we shall put into practice, enjoy the practice in order to do so. We don't just listen, we try together to practice peace, release, so that we will bring clarity, 
bring harmony and joy back to our, ourselves. When you breathe in, and if you're aware that you are breathing in, we call it mindfulness of breathing. When you drink your tea, and if you are aware that you are drinking your tea, and you focus all your attention into drinking tea and not thinking of anything else, that is called mindful drinking. When you walk, and if you pay attention only to the step you make and nothing else, that's called mindful walking. There are two kinds of uh, walking inside, in a meditation hall, or in a backyard, your backyard. You may like to practice slow walking, especially for beginners. Uh, slow walking is very helpful. When you breathe in, you just make one step. And when you breathe out, you make another step and bring full attention to the contact between your foot and the ground that you touch. Breathing in, you make one step with your left foot and you say to yourself, I have arrived. This is not a declaration. This is a practice. You have to really arrive. Arrive where? Arrive in the here and the now. Because according to this teaching and practice, life is available only in the here and the now. The past is already gone. The future is not yet there. There's only one moment when you can be truly alive. That is the present moment. So your step brings you back home to the present moment so that you can touch the wonders of life in that moment. You have an appointment with life, and that appointment is made in the here and the now. If you miss the present moment, you miss your appointment with life, which is very serious. And walking, mindful walking, is a wonderful way to learn, to train ourselves to live in the here and the now. It means to be truly alive. If you are carried by the past, if you are carried away by the future, You are not really living your life. Only by touching in depth the present moment, you can touch true life. You you can be described as truly alive. That is why walking, mindful walking, is a very wonderful and easy way to learn how to live your life deeply by touching the present moment. Breathing in, you make one step. And you say, I have arrived. I have said that this is not a statement, that is practice. And you are the one who knows whether you have really arrived or not. Arrive in the here and the now, where you have an appointment with life. There are those of us who can succeed right away during the first hour of training. There are those of us who need uh, more time, maybe one, one or two days. But everyone with uh, a willingness to do, be able to arrive in the here and the now. And when you breathe out, you make another step, and you say, I'm home. Because my true home is not in the past. My true home is not in the future. My true home is life itself. It is in the here and the now. I have arrived in my true home. I feel at ease my true home. I do not need to run anymore because the tendency to run is there in every one of us. We have run for all our life and we shall continue to run, run into the future where we think that some happiness may be possible. And that habit of running we may have received from our parents and ancestors. So when the habit of running is recognized, 
by your mind for breathing you just smile to it hello my dear uh, old friend I know you are there and then you are free from your habit energy you don't have to fight it there is no fighting in this practice there's only recognition awareness of what is going on when the habit energy of running manifests itself you just smile it and you say hello my dear old friend I know you and then you are free from it and you continue to breathe in, breathe out, and to enjoy the present moment. And if you are surrounded by many brothers and sisters who practice the same, you will be supported by the collective energy, and the practice becomes very easy, very natural. And uh, in this uh, uh, retreat, there are many of us who are used to the practice who are able to enjoy walking and enjoying every step, touching the wonders of life in the here and the now. And that collective energy will support those of us who are new to the practice. You have to allow the collective energy to transport you. You have the pain, the sorrow, the fear within yourself. Don't keep it for you alone. Allow the Sangha, allow the community to embrace it for you. Allow the collective energy to help you to embrace it. Because alone, you are not strong enough to embrace your pain, your sorrow, because you are a beginner. When you throw a rock into the river, no matter how small the rock is, it will sink into the river. But if you have a boat, you can carry many uh, tons of rocks and you don't sink. The same thing is true with our sorrow, our fear, our pain. If you allow the boat of mindfulness, if you allow the collective energy of mindfulness of the community to transport us, to embrace us, and then we will not sink into the river the ocean of suffering. That is why it's wonderful to have a community of practice around us. This is a, this is a wonderful. And then the collective energy of mindfulness will be strong enough to help us hold the suffering, the fear, the despair in us, and helping us to do the work of transformation and healing. And that is why in the Buddhist tradition we speak of taking refuge in the Sangha. Taking refuge in the, in the Sangha means to profit from the energy, collective energy of the Sangha. Taking refuge in the Sangha is not a matter of belief, of faith. It is a matter of practice. If you want your practice to continue, you should create a group of people around you practicing together. And your practice will be sustained by the collective energy of the group. Otherwise, uh, you might abandon the practice after a few months. Let us enjoy uh, breathing in and out with the bell for half a minute. When you breathe in and you say, I have arrived, if you feel that you have arrived, smile. Smile to yourself, a smile of congratulation. It's very important to arrive because when you arrive, you don't run anymore. You have stopped the running. Many of us continue to run even during our dream, our sleep. We can never rest. In our dream, in our nightmare, we continue to run. That is why we have to train to stop. Stopping helps us to be in the here and the now and touch the wonders of life for our transformation and healing. 
I have arrived. I'm home. Maybe in five minutes, you are able to arrive. You are able to enjoy it. And during that five minutes, you don't run at all. You allow yourself to be in the here and the now. You might like to focus your attention on the contact between your foot and the ground below. You might walk on the grass. You, you might walk on in your living room. Slowly, I have arrived. I am home. And if you are accompanied by your spouse, by your partner, by your child, well, that's wonderful because you get the support of the other person who is doing exactly the same thing. There are times when we, we work in group of uh, 4,000 people, 6,000 people, and the uh, collective energy is very, very powerful. In uh, Frankfurt, in Florence, in many cities, uh, we have worked in groups of 4,000, 5,000. We just enjoy working. No slogan, no banner, nothing. We just practice mindful breathing and mindful working, and the children work with us. I have arrived. I'm home. This is a practice. Every time you have uh, five minutes, ten minutes, enjoy the practice. Because the practice is a very pleasant. I always enjoy, I only have one style of walk, walking, mindful walking. Even if the distance is only one meter or two, I always apply the techniques and enjoy mindful walking. Climbing into the bus, even if uh, there are only two, three steps, you enjoy. Uh, climbing to the airplane, you, you enjoy every step. I'm able to walk everywhere, mindfully, and enjoy every step. Walking like that is like walking in the kingdom of God, in the pure land of the Buddha. We know that there are wonders of life that are available around us and in us. And if we are, if we are caught by our fear, our pain, our worries, we cannot in touch with them. That is why to free ourselves from the past, from the future, from our projects, and to become available to the here and to the now, we can get in touch with all these wonders. In Buddhism, we do not use the word, the expression, uh, the kingdom of God, but we use the word, the pure land of the Buddha. And I can say that I enjoy walking in the kingdom of God every day. Why should I deprive myself of that joy? So walking, mindful walking is my practice. Every time I need to move, I just walk like that. And everyone, can do that. In my community in France, the whole community practice mindful work. Whether they go to the kitchen, to the meditation hall, to the restroom, uh, they always apply the techniques and the art of mindful working. Learning how to live deeply every moment of our daily life. When we practice working together outside, we might like to walk a little bit uh, quicker. If you go to the, to the park, to the central park, to the zoo, you might like to walk uh, a little bit more normally. It means that uh, breathing in, you might like to make two steps or three steps. I have arrived, arrived, arrived. Breathing in, I can make three steps. And I do it very, very naturally. 
people may not know that I'm doing mindful walking. And I enjoy every step. And when you breathe out, you may like to make three steps. I'm home, I'm home, I'm home. And the energy of mindfulness inhabit you and protect you. And walking meditation is a wonderful way to get in touch with the positive elements of life that are available inside of us and around us. Breathing in, I'm aware of my heart. Breathing out, I smile to my heart. That is the practice of mindfulness. When I bring my attention to my heart, I realize that uh, my heart is a wonder. My heart is wonderful. My heart is still functioning normally. And it is one of the basic conditions of my well-being. That those of us who do not have a normal heart, they can be subjected to a heart attack at any time. And their deepest desire is to have a normal heart like ours. So when you breathe in and you bring your attention to your heart, you bring a lot of kindness and comfort to your heart because you might have thought of many things else, but you have neglected your heart. You might have drunk a lot of alcohol. You might have smoked a lot. You may have stayed up very late into the night. You have given your heart a difficult time. And your heart is one of the basic conditions for your well-being. So going home to your heart, embrace your heart tenderly with the energy of mindfulness, and smile to your heart. It's very comforting. It's very healing. Maybe this is the first time you go back to your heart with love and kindness, with compassion. And then you will wake up to the, the fact that you have not been very kind to your heart. Every time you strike a match and, and light a cigarette, you committed an unfriendly act toward your heart. And breathing in and become aware of your heart is an act of friendship, of enlightenment. And you will know exactly what to do, and especially what not to do, in order to be really uh, caring for your heart. This is a practice of peace, of reconciliation. There are many organs like that in our body. And in order to have peace in the world, we should know how to bring peace to our body, to our feelings, and so on. And the practice is a very concrete. The practice is very clear. And we can do it together, supporting each other. As a monk, I have to listen to many people who suffer in order to help them. But if you spend all your time doing that, you'll be sick. You have to know your limit. You have to learn how to restore a balance. Of course, you have to get in touch with the negative, dark side of life in order to bring help and transformation and healing. But you have to learn to get in touch with the positive side, healing, nourishing, refreshing. And this is our practice. As a monk, I practice like that also. Walking meditation helped me to get in touch with the wonders of life that are available in the here and the now, helping me in my nourishment and healing so that I can be available to help those who suffer. But you have to arrange your life in such a way that you have enough time to get in touch with people who are not sick, with the people who have joy, with people who have the capacity of being happy. And the practice of uh, walking meditation can help you. And sitting with friends in order to enjoy a cup of tea and touch the wonders of life in them and around them. This is our practice. We have to organize our day in an intelligent way in order to protect ourselves. And we have to do that together as a group of people. 
in Plum Village, where I live and practice. We have the practice of second body, the practice of the second body, the second body system. Every one of us has a second body to take care of. You care about him or her. You should be aware of what is going on in him or in her, because he or she is your second body. If uh, he's happy, you know that he's happy. If he has some problem, you know that he has some problem. If he needs help, you know that uh, he needs help. And you yourself, you are the second body of someone else. Everyone in the community is a second body for someone else and who is responsible for another person whom you call your second body. It is possible to organize a life like that. It is possible for us to organize so that we have a second body to take care of and we'll be a second body of someone who will take, take care of us. In that way, we can combine our energy of mindfulness we are not alone, we are, do not feel alone. We have to deal with uh, the problems all alone. We feel that the community is always supporting us, embodied with the presence of uh, the person of whom we are his or her uh, second body. But there are many things that you can do in order for us to be protected with the energy of mindfulness generated by ourselves and generated by our community, our family, our agency, our department. It is possible to discuss with your colleagues in how to recognize so that everybody can profit from the collective energy of mindfulness and concentration and joy. I have arrived. I am home in the here in the now. I am solid. I am free. In the ultimate, I am. When you say, in the here, in the now, it means that that is the, your destination. You have arrived in the here and the now, where life is available. And when you are able to arrive, the element of solidity and freedom become a reality. Before that, it's impossible. And we know that without some freedom, happiness and peace could not be possible. When you feel that you have arrived, you know that you are free from the regret concerning the past, and the fearfulness about the future. You are able to touch the wonders of life. That means that you are free. You have established yourself in the here and the now. You are solid. You are not being pulled away by the past, by the future. And that is why I am solid, I am free, is not wishful thinking. It's not uh, auto-suggestion. It is a reality because, just because you have been able to arrive and to feel at home in the here and the now. I have arrived. I am home. In the here, in the now, I am solid. I am free. You recognize that you are now more solid. You recognize the fact that you are now more free. It means happiness is possible. When you eat your breakfast, in the morning. Eat your breakfast in such a way that freedom be possible. If you want, you can do that. During the time of eating breakfast, you don't think of the future, of what you are going to do. Your practice is to be there for your breakfast. Your breakfast is there for you. You have to be there for your breakfast. <laughs> Each morsel of food that you, that you have, you can show it with joy and freedom. When I hold a piece of bread and look at it, I may like to smile to it. The piece of bread is 
an ambassador of the cosmos coming to you for your nourishment, for your support. Looking deeply into the piece of bread, you can see the sunshine, you can see the cloud, you can see the great earth. Without the sunshine, no wheat can grow. With, without the cloud, there's no rain for the wheat to grow. Without the great earth, nothing can grow. That is why the piece of bread that you hold in your hand is a wonder of life. And it is there for you. You have to be there for it. You eat with gratitude. And when you put the piece of bread into your mouth, you only show bread and not your projects and worries or fear or anger. That is the practice of mindfulness. You show mindfully and you know that you are showing the bread, a wonder of life that has come to you from the cosmos, that brings you freedom and joy. And eat every morsel of your breakfast like that, and not to allow yourself to be carried away by your thinking, by your worries, by your fearfulness. And this is uh, training. And uh, children who come to Plum Village, they are able to do that also. When you brush your teeth, how much time can you afford to brush your teeth? At least one minute? Maybe two? You brush your teeth in such a way that freedom is possible and joy is possible. Don't allow yourself to be carried away by your projects, by your thinking, by your worries. I am standing here brushing my teeth. I still have teeth to brush. <laughs> I have the dental cream. I have a brush. And my practice is to, to be alive, to be free, to enjoy toothbrushing. Don't allow yourself to, to be a slave of the past, of the future. The practice is practice of freedom. And if freedom is there, you enjoy brushing your teeth. Resist the tendency to be carried away by your thinking, your fear. When you go to the restroom, it's interesting. In America, you call it the restroom. Do you feel restful in your restroom? <laughs> in France, in all time, they call it uh, le cabinet d'aisance. Aisance is ease. You feel at ease, you feel comfortable. So when you go to the restroom, feel at ease with it. Enjoy the time you are in the restroom. That's my practice. When I urinate, I allow myself to be entirely with the act of urinating, and it, believe me, it is very pleasant. <laughs> if you have freedom, and then urinating is very pleasant, you invest 100% of your body and mind into the act of urinating. It can free you. It can be joyful. If you have uh, had the experience of urinal infection, and you see that urinating is painful. You don't have any infection. Therefore, urinating is very pleasant, restful. Be free during the time, the 20 second or 30 second or one minute of urinating. And this is the practice of mindfulness that allow you to sink deeply in the here and the now and get in touch with the wonders of life that are available so that you be strong enough, you be lucid enough, you be ready in order to handle the difficult moments, the difficult things. And the most difficult things are not outside, it is inside of you. When you practice sitting, sit in such a way that you feel joy, Mindful sitting is a joy, is a luxury to have the time to sit and to do nothing. Nelson Mandela, 
the former president of South Africa. When he first came to France for an official visit, he was asked by the press what he would like to do the most. He said, what do I want to do the most? Just sit down and do nothing. Because from the time I was released from prison up to now, I have not had the time to do so. Just sit down and do nothing. Poor president. We have to sit for him. We have to enjoy sitting for him and for people like him. When I read that report, I asked myself whether if uh, Mr. Nelson Mandela, Mandela was given the time to sit down and do nothing, whether he is able to do so. Mr. President, you have uh, half an hour for sitting and doing nothing. Please enjoy it. I'm not sure that he can do it. That is prob the problem with, with many of us. We complain that you don't have the time to rest, to enjoy being there. But we are used to be always doing something. We have no capacity of resting, of doing nothing. We are workaholic. We should be always doing something, otherwise we will die. That is why learning how to be there without doing anything is a very important practice. It's a very challenging practice. In Plum Village, every week we have one day we call a lazy day. And you have to be truly lazy. There's no schedule at all. Everyone is on his or her own. You can do everything uh, you want, but the practice is not to get busy. And that's a real challenge for those who are not used to the practice. And that day turned to be a very delicious day, very quiet, because everyone respects had to deal with the community with respect and to allow all the other people to enjoy the lazy day. And whether you are lazy or not, you know. But you have the habit energy of being busy. And that is why the lazy day is a challenge. And uh, you are not expected to do anything. You are expected to be as lazy as possible. And if you meet a brother or a sister on your path, and if you want to ask a question, the question is, dear friend, are you lazy enough today? <laughs> sitting meditation, mindful sitting, is a really a luxury of our time to sit and do nothing. And many of us do not know how to enjoy sitting. With a cushion or sitting on the grass, you find the most comfortable position you may have. You don't need to imitate anyone. You don't have to put yourself in a lotus position. Invent the position that is the most comfortable. The tulip position, the magnolia position, whatever <laughs> position you like, without cushion. And stay there and enjoy doing nothing, and just enjoy your in-breath and out-breath. Don't allow you to be carried away by your thinking, your worries, your projects. Just sit there and enjoy doing nothing. Enjoy your breathing. Enjoy the fact that you are alive. You have 20 minutes, half an hour, to enjoy doing nothing. And if you are supported by other people around you, sitting and enjoying like that, in Plum Ridge, we call it be in. We sit together. We just feel the presence of each other. And this is a very nourishing. Whether we sit on the grass together, or in the bamboo grove together, or we feel the community, we feel the brotherhood, we feel the sisterhood, we feel supported by all other people. It's wonderful to be alive and to be sitting like a, a community an organism. And this is very healing. This is a transforming and nourishing. So, mindful sitting, peaceful sitting, joyful sitting, 
is what we should learn. Every time you hear the bell, it is a reminder. If you are thinking about something, you smile to your thinking, I'm supposed to, to go home to the here and the now and to touch the wonders of life. So the bell of mindfulness is the voice of your best calling you to your true home. Your true home is in the here and the now. Your true home is life. Every time I hear the bell, I practice going home to my in-breath and out-breath. I listen. I listen. This wonderful sound bring myself to my true home. My true home is the inner here and the now. Đừng tìm về quá khứ Đừng tưởng tới 